Hi everybody. Today we're going to get started with Flask. Uh, Flask is a web application framework and it's, uh, these frameworks allow us to build dynamic websites and web apps uh, without having to do them from scratch, without having to kind of from scratch develop them in Python or C++. So it's a scaffolding that we can use so we can easily create this dynamic content, these really kind of great data-driven web apps. So something exactly what we're trying to do here. Flask is a micro web application framework. The word micro is used when um, these frameworks don't have a database abstraction layer. Seems like something you might want to have, this database abstraction layer, but since this is a class about databases, we don't really want to kind of abstract away initially. We want to really learn how these databases work. So it's, that's actually a good thing for Flask. And Flask also, because it's micro, doesn't force us to use any particular tool or library, so it's fairly a free form. It allows us to do lots of stuff. In other words, it's very lean. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is install Flask. And for that, I'm going to type sudo easy install Flask. And I'm going to install something else at the same time, Markdown. Sweet. So now Flask is installed. That was fairly easy to do. Um, let's start, let's create a simple server. So under file, I'm going to create a new file. Just make sure I'm in. I'm going to import the OS module, the operating system module. That gives us some functionality. And I'm going to save it right away just because I like the syntactic highlighting to be on. So I'm going to call it, because we're developing a web app server, I'm going to call it server PY, but you can name it whatever you want, obviously. Now I'm getting the highlighting. That's sweet. Let me get back into the editor. Um, and then from, if I can type, from Flask import flask so this is the thing we uh, just installed this flask and we're importing this um, class called fl flask now i'm going to use a python decorator hopefully you're familiar with those from your 110 class or wherever app root I think that looks right to me so what that says is uh, when you execute this method root from this Flask module. Oops, wait, I missed a spot. Ah. The first. All right, beep. All right, then app equals Flask name. Okay, what that does is uh, this name here refers to the name of the scope. Uh, in which this code is executing. So name is a built-in environment um, variable that refers to the scope. We'll see uh, how this is used a little bit later. So now that I created this uh, object, I can call a method. So And this is a decorator, what's called a decorator in Python. And this says whenever you are executing this method, app.root, with the argument slash, then what you're really going to do is execute whatever occurs next. In this case, I'm going to write uh, a little Python function, hello world, let's say, something pretty rinky-dink, and I'm just going to return the, the string hello world. Okay, that's as, pretty, as easy as we can get. Now I'm going to actually start the server. So if that top-level environment, or if that environment is the top-level, That's what that means. So I'm at the top level environment. Then I'm going to run the app. And I'm going to give it some arguments. So I'm going to say, what, where am I running it? Host equals. And here I'm going to use this the OS module I just imported, get the environment variable, I, the IP address. If there isn't one present, return 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0. That looks good good to me. Next we're going to do the same for the port. I keep losing my... and this time I'm going to cast it to an int os get env port. You're going to be seeing me type a lot of errors here. It's just the way life is. Okay, that looks good. And the final thing I want, and sorry I'm kind of running out of space because I got my font big, but I'm going to say debug equals true and let's close that up and obviously I have some error which I'll debug in a second 
Oh, I see the error. No, I don't know what the error is. No, it's in there. Okay, hold on. That looks good. Debug is true. Looks good. Oh, I never closed this quote off. There we go. So what this does is, so it's going to run this uh, this cert little server we made. Um, the host is going to be whatever IP address we have. The port it, by default will be 8080. Debug true. What that does is if we make changes to this file while the server is running, the server will automatically restart and incorporate those changes. If we didn't have that there, every time we made a change to the file, we would have to stop the server and start it again. Kind of a hassle when you're developing stuff. So this debug true is really, really handy. I think I got this. So what happens when the server starts and someone with their uh, in their browser is going to go to our web server, this would be the root directory here, What's or the root of the IP address, what's going to happen is that we'll execute this code. It should return hello world. All right, I think that works. Let's run it. There's this little run icon here. And my gosh, that actually looked good. Okay, and it told me to do that, so that looks actually good. Okay, now I'm going to copy this uh, web address that it gave me. I can just right click this preview, but I don't like that approach. It kind of splits things off and makes things a little harder to see. So I'm just going to open up a new tab, paste in that web address. You can give that to anyone. Someone in Texas can look at it at, right at the same time and see your hello world uh, thing that you return there. Cool. You have a website now that says hello world. That's pretty exciting. Let's make hello world a little bigger here. Let's just kind of play with this a bit. So I'm going to make it a header. Let me get the syntax right. So that should make it big. So I saved it. It automatically restarts. I, sorry, I didn't, but it restarted there. And now that's pretty cool. Let's play a little bit more here. Let's uh, add a little bit to this H1. Let's go... Um, let's just change the style here. Okay, that looks fine to me. And it makes a nice hello world. That's cool. And I can go on and talk about my whole wel welcome to the website about stuff, whatever. So I can just write whatever HTML I want here, and it creates it here. So pretty sweet. Let's see what we can do some more. Now we have a website that has just one web page. Let's see if we can add another web page. Sure, we can have, um, show how to do that. So I'm going to have another decorator here, app root. So now when someone types in mm, about, I'm going to tell them all about me. Def about me. Return which one about me, me, me. I was born on a farm Northern Wisconsin. All right, well, that, what could be more interesting than that? All right, so let's save that. Again, go to our website. This page didn't change, I did, but now there should be an About page. So up here in the address bar, I can go About, and it tells about me, me, me. I was born on a farm in northern Wisconsin. Cool, we have two web pages. That looks pretty sweet. Let's see if I can add a link here. I'll just say find out about me. Okay, now I'm going to add this link. So it's a href, if I can spell, equals Okay, that should be one. Hopefully that is correct. Okay, go back to our initial page, reload it, find out about me, needs a link. I click to it, it goes to about me, me, me. 
So that's pretty sweet. So now uh, it's a good time for you to practice. Give this a shot. Try to write a few other uh, website, web pages so just to get familiar with different things. Got a few links here. All right, cool. All right, and we'll see you at the next episode, which will be more about Flask.